either peasant person. Um, hi. Where did you come from? I'm Mars, god of war. Wow. Are those real horns? Yes, they are. Do you like them? Actually, they are kind of scary. So hey, when you say god, do you mean like all powerful? That I do. You may be honored and appropriately awestruck. I appear to mortals but few. I don't want to be rude, but... I know, I know. I get that all the time. You want proof for your doubting mind. I'm sure you can understand. Have you ever seen a man with horns? No. Have you ever seen fine sexy clothing such as this? No. Did you notice that I stopped these birds in mid-flight? That is my best painting behind you. The real sun and birds are back there. You passed my test so you were chosen. Chosen for what? To believe in me and benefit from my blessings. So, what do you want from me, Mr. Mars? Just, like, obey my commands and tell people about me. And, excuse me for asking, but, what if I don't? I can make terrible things happen to you. Mostly after you are dead. After I'm dead? So why should I care? Because the afterlife goes on forever. Imagine spending forever in pain. What kind of pain? Like a stubbed toe or a headache? No. Worse. Like the embarrassment of someone catching me masturbating while looking at etchings of goats. Much worse. Like a bad sunburn? Worse than that. Like, your flesh being flayed from your bones while your whole body is on fire for eternity. Would people be watching? If that makes it worse? Oh wow. So, Mr. War God, if I obey your commands and tell people about you, I can avoid that. Totally. I can make your afterlife pure pleasure and fun. The rules are pretty easy to follow for almost anyone. I even follow them myself sometimes. I shall surely try. Excellent. I will be watching and judging. I'll send someone around to collect a minor tribute, as well. Tribute? Operational costs. Nothing to worry about. Mr. Mars, do you like my painting of sun and birds? Oh yeah. A bit peaceful for my taste. I just realized I left the oven on. I'll get back to you with those rules soon. Bye. Wow. Father an apparition approaches. Indeed, my son. I come in peace. He comes in peace. So he says. Hey, I know that earlier you may have heard I was a spirit or god. Spirit. God. Perhaps you confuse us with some others? Well, that is great. See, what I meant was, I'm really good friends with the One God. One God? One God. He talks to me all the time. Ah, you are shaman? If that means God talks to me, then yes, I am a shaman. Be welcome, holy man. Thank you. I shall not stay long, as I have many to visit. What does your One God speak to you? Mostly just about what he wants for my people, your people, and some rules. Because he created all of us, he knows what is best for us, so he wants me to pass those rules on to you all. Oh! What rules are these? Don't kill each other. Don't steal. Love each other. Share your land. Common sense stuff like that. I'll make them all formal at some point. Set up some punishments so that people are motivated to follow the rules. What would he do if we don't follow them or listen to you? Great question. Well, we've seen what happens when he gets angry. He does pretty big things like flooding the entire planet. Father, I'm scared. Son, I hear your fear of this white shaman's words. Not to worry. I'll get you those rules soon. They are easy to follow. You will be safe. We will be safe. I go now. Nice piece of land you have here. Thanks. We'll love the view. Bye. So, how's God treating you? Has he passed down any edicts lately? Oh, I don't actually talk with God anymore. 
With all my duties, it's become impossible. Is God's will being ignored? Won't he get angry and flood the world again? Oh, for heaven's sake, no. That's a relief. May I ask who is talking with him? I have friends who talk to him and tell me what he wants for the people. And frankly, I'm relieved. I was never very good at it. Oh? My queen, may I ask? Who are these friends? Priests. Great guys. Cute uniforms. Devoted and reliable. I'm glad you found a solution, my queen. You have been so overworked lately. Thanks. Dealing with rebellions can be such a bloody drain. I can only imagine. Would you like a cup of tea? Thank you. I would like that very much. And how are things going with the church, Mr. President? Oh, not so well, Marigold. I'm sorry to hear that. I thought you and the priests had a friendly relationship. What happened? It turns out those priests were only pretending to talk to God. No way. Way. I always wondered. Yeah, and looking back, I see how crazy it sounded. Trusting those priests that they know his will? Yeah. So you can forget all that stuff about me listening to those guys. And how could any one religion or rule work for all people in all their diversity? I know what you mean. I'll admit I always did think that was kind of old-fashioned. It was. I admit it. It's the people I need to listen to. It is the people I serve. It's for the good of... Um... It's for the common good. Common good? Oh, so you were going to argue against the common good, Marigold. It sounds like you care a lot about the well-being of the people, Mr. President, and it is frustrating that you can't help them all. That is true. I'm sorry for flying off the handle. With that fool, Woodrow Wilson, nipping at my heels, I'm having a hard time right now. If he wins, his crazy support for a central bank will start this great country on the path to ruin. Is common good like the will of the people, Mr. President? Close. Marigold. But if each person has a different want or need, how can one blanket solution work? Hmm. Okay, so maybe I don't do the will of the people. Now that I think about it and hear myself saying it out loud, I see how stupid it sounds. How could the people, as in many people, have a will as in one will? Yeah. It defies logic. Sounds like socialism to me. But here is the thing. Many people just don't know what is good for them. They lack the compassion and intelligence that I have. You do seem pretty smart, Theodore. We shall see. The problem is, most people either don't care about the future or can't, really, think that far ahead. That's my job. You have a hard job, Mr. President. The world is complex place and most people just can't understand how all the parts work together so they need someone like me. And, of course, they can trust me with the power to get these things done so they definitely need to do what I say. They do say you speak softly and carry a big stick. Kind of you to say that, Marigold. You earned it, Theodore. I fear my efforts at peace and prosperity making have set an example that will not last for long. Woodrow has very little respect for the principles represented in our great constitution. The war drums do tend to beat often for political gain, sir. Part of me lusts to be entrusted with the power necessary to wage another honest battle against the corruption he represents, and part of me fears the force for tyranny that this great office can so easily become. I'm so glad you are the one in this role of so much responsibility, Mr. President. Miss President, it is such an honor to have you on the show. Thank you, David. It's a real pleasure to be here. Shall we dive in with a tough question? Hit me, David. What motivated you to desire the most powerful position in the land? I sought this position of power with the intention of doing great things for the world. And America, of course. Cool. But yeah, now, corporations give me a boatload of money and I can do a lot to help myself and my friends. And the people, of course. We all want to help our friends. But I'm wondering... Yes. Back when you were competing with that other politician, you talked a lot about making peace, and I'm seeing even more war than before. Why is that, Miss President? 
I know you are looking at all the bombs and bullets being used against people in our country and others. Yeah. Just yesterday my dentist's house was blown up by a drone missile because he was behind on taxes. Please let me continue without interruption, David. Sorry. As I was saying, despite my best efforts. Well, actually, the best efforts of my highly paid public relations and counterintelligence experts, you have seen and heard rumors of civil rights violations and war crimes sanctioned by my office. But please, just for a minute. Put yourself in the shoes of the guys who run the big companies who pay me the money and want return on their investment. If those big companies fall, we all do. And they will take me down with them because I have promised to protect them. And what would America do without a leader? Okay. I hear the doubt in your voice, David. Oh sure, from your position I shouldn't expect you to have any sympathy for, or even understanding of, the situation my friends are in. Maybe if I dumb it down a bit. Please do help me understand, great leader. Let's see. If you are a student who hands gifts to the schoolyard bully, I mean, the biggest, toughest kid in school. If you give him things like candy, lunch money, or maybe you write for the school newspaper and say all kinds of good things about the tough kid, wouldn't you expect that tough kid to protect you and to beat up any kids who won't play the games you want to play? Especially when you know in your bones which games those kids need to play for their own good. When you put it that way, Miss President, it almost sounds fair. Thanks, David. But let's get back to me and my friends. It's pretty hard for most people to understand just how much danger Americans are in from so many crazy terrorists sitting in caves plotting to destroy America. And, as you have doubtless heard on ABC, NBC, CBS, CNN, and Fox, many of those terrorists are right here in America. They sound dangerous and scary. They are dangerous. They don't think like we do. Psychologists agree. They hate us because we are so free. Free? What about all our laws and prisons? Don't we have the most prisoners per capita of any nation in the world? It depends on how you look at things. Statistics can be manipulated to show anything. What do you think about former President Obama's Indefinite Detention Act, which severely limits the Fifth Amendment right to due process? That is a very racist thing to say, David. Okay. Can you pretend I asked that question about a white president? My predecessor renewed Bush's Patriot Act and signed the Indefinite Detention Act purely for the protection of America. Since we in the government know so much more about how to make you safe than you do, it's important that we dispense with old-fashioned ideas of courts and juries so that we can move fast to stop terrorism. All this talk of war and terror. I'm surprised, Miss President. I thought Democrats were anti-war. That assertion shows you for the capitalist man, pig, that you are. I assure you that I am anti-war. I see you feel passionately about peace. I do. Now that we have friends controlling every country in the Middle East and many other parts of the world, in some ways we are safer than ever and in some ways we are in more danger than ever. With China and Russia just waiting for an opening, we have to keep our guard up. What are your thoughts on blowback? Do you attribute any of America's unpopularity to us being on this constant killing rampage? David, I'm simply not going to answer rude questions. Okay. With respect, what is your enlightened opinion about the continuous move farther south into Africa? I hear Nigeria is next on our invasion timetable. Wherever evil dictators abuse their people, it is our responsibility to step in and help those people. But we wreck most of the Middle East as well as Libya, Egypt, and the rest of North Africa. Are the people better off now? Unfortunately, we can never know what those evil dictators might have done to their people and to us, if we left them alone. That is true, Miss President. We will never know. And where would you all be if I wasn't here with my super smart team of military strategists to protect all of you? But as long as you do what I say, you are safe, because we have plans to kill all those terrorists before they kill us. I heard the same thing on CNN. See. But aren't the mainstream media outlets owned by the same guys you were calling your friends earlier? That is exactly the kind of coincidence that overly curious fools waste their time thinking about. 
Oh. Yes. And by the way, you do realize the planet is flooding again, right? But no worries, we have plans to save the Earth from flooding. Oh yeah. I think they were talking about that on NBC or CBS. Yep. And there have been impartial studies from people with PhDs and they agree. Oh. Don't scientists have agendas too? You are a curious one, David. Maybe you are looking around and noticing. Too much. Maybe you are having a harder time believing me. You probably believe the disobedient people making crazy talk about me spending your tax money wastefully. Yes, as a matter of fact, I worry about my children's children paying for the debt. You obviously don't understand the basics of economics, David. Actually, I've spent quite a bit of time lately studying economics. Austrian economics in particular has been illuminating. When I look at how the dollar has continued to lose value since the creation of the Federal Reserve Central Bank in 1913 and especially in the past 12 years and I look at how much money the Federal Reserve has printed in that period, I get a little worried. David, there is no need to worry. That is all myth. There is no need to worry. We are in a slow recovery. There is no need to worry. Everyone must do his part. There is no need to. Are you okay, Miss President? Sorry. I forgot to take my medication today. Okay. Wouldn't you say it's pretty simple to see that when the Federal Reserve increases the money supply, existing dollars become less valuable? It is never that simple, David. The problem is the greedy corporations. I'm confused. Do you mean the friends you spoke of earlier? Those aren't the ones. My friends are the good corporations. You mean like government motors? Formerly General Motors? You mean like Union Foods, formerly Monsanto? You mean like People's State Bank? Yes. We need those companies. Without their help, America would descend into chaos and poverty. That reminds me. One of the first things you did when you got into office three years ago was enact the new People Being Watched Will Commit No Crimes Act. Yes. That didn't work out as I had planned. Too much overhead. The expense of millions of video cameras, new government employees to do the required monitoring, and the 50,000 new DHS agents we had to hire to handle arrests and discipline. Congress cut the budget on that program. Their salaries were in danger. Sadly, there was just no way we could afford it. I'm also wondering why you give so much of taxpayer and borrowed money to your friends on Wall Street. David. I realize that, even if they are all lies, eventually you get curious and even start to believe some of the lies. So here is what I'm going to do. I'm going to give all of you greedy monkey peasants a bunch of free stuff so you can really understand how benevolent I am. Oh. Thanks. This goes out to the whole audience. Are you worried about your children or grandchildren going to college because tuition is so expensive? Worry no more. Fixed. Free college for everyone. Wow. Are you worried that if you got sick or hurt, you wouldn't be able to afford health care? Worry no more. Fixed. Free health care for everyone. Where is all that money coming from? It's complicated. Just enjoy the gift. Live in the now. Gee. You were pretty awesome. Maybe I got you wrong. You did. See these tears in my eyes? Hold on a second. See these tears? They are for the children. What children? The ones our military has killed in Libya, Iraq, Afghanistan, Syria, or Yemen? No, no, no. Those are the sons and daughters of America-hating terrorists. I mean the children in America who are now hooked on Gov. I mean, the ones who would starve without food stamps and welfare checks. David. We both know you are completely ignoring the approved questions list that my people gave your people. I think I see your tears now. Good. So here's the thing I need from you. From all of you. Trust me. I need your support in order to keep doing such great things. See how when people speak out against me, they make it harder for me to do good for all of you? All of us. What? Oh, you are a sharp monkey peasant. I know some say how it is silly to think we can do, one, good thing for, many, people because people are different. Yeah. How can that work? Seems like it failed in Soviet Socialist Russia, 
National Socialist Nazi Germany, Communist Cuba, East Germany, and many other countries that based their politics on that philosophy and failed every time. Ah, uh, but this time, we finally solved that paradox. We have a complex plan to fit a complex world. What we do is make the world more simple by making people more. The same. Diversity is the root of inequality, strife, and poverty. Did you just say that diversity is the root of inequality, strife, and poverty? Yes. I'm sure you agree how important equality is, David. So if people are not born equal, or some work smarter or harder than others, we need to make them equal. How? Who measures and decides? Those are questions for experts to handle and I have many experts with grand titles on retainers so don't worry, the equal making will be done fairly. To all the Americans out there watching right now, if poor life choices or fate dealt you a bad hand, you will especially love our plan. Well, that was informative. Thank you so much for coming on to the show, Miss President. You are welcome, David. Thank you. Oh. Can you please answer one more question? Sure, David. Have you heard of Mars, the Roman god of war? Why, yes, David. I have. Interesting. His name has been coming across my field of view lately. I believe him to be an incredibly misunderstood persona. Oh, in what ways? Well, pretty much all of it. They have it. Really? How can you possibly know? I believe myself to be him in reincarnated form. Wow. Yeah. Wow.